Hey, this is Tyler with Tapper, and today we're resurrecting a project from the depths. This one, as you can see, had a little bit of an issue with it wobbling back and forth, so it wasn't sitting flat against the wall. And that's kind of something you want in a mirror, so I'm going to try to fix that and finish everything up on it today. Why I was making a mirror frame in the first place is because, yeah, a couple years ago was when Scotchy was still around. We had a dog that came into the bedroom and knocked over a mirror frame that was my wife's great-grandmother's, I believe. So it had some sentimental value to her and mirror broke in half. I kept the biggest piece of it, figuring I would make something out of it for her so she could keep it around for sentimental value. Now these strips of maple that I'm cutting out is how I'm planning on getting the frame untwisted. And you'll see how that works out here in a minute. How I was originally going to mount the mirror inside this frame was to route out on the back side a little place to let the mirror fit up inside. And since I wasn't going to do that anymore, I figured I would take the opportunity and put a decorative lip around the inside of this. The initial construction of this was very simple. I used biscuit joints in there, and then those uh, thicker pieces on the ends were just thicker pieces of wood that I cut those angles off of and routed around everything. So getting back to fixing the original problem, what I did is I put two blocks under the middle of both sides, and then I just used a couple of screws, and what that's doing is it's pushing both those corners down to make them where they need to sit. After I made sure they were level, I could come back in, and these are the maple strips I cut out. I went back and I cut all the angles in I needed there. I figured if I glued these down and put it in there, it would give it some uh, dimensional strength in the other direction and lock in that twist that I had artificially put in there with those screws to get it flat. So I clamped everything in place first, and then I took each part out individually. That way I could make sure it was a tight fit and it would go all the way around the perimeter and nothing would move and get ready for the next step. Since there was going to be that torsion in there, that in the wood, I wanted to make sure that they were physically attached more than just the glue. I think the glue probably would have been fine, but I went back in. I had to pre-drill all the holes. I can see me counter something there, and then I went back in and just uh, buzzed some screws down in there. I countersank them in far enough uh, so there would be a little bit of a lip over it so I could come back in with some wood filler. And I mean, you weren't going to be able to see the back of this anyway, but I figured I'd make it a little bit more finished and fill all the holes afterward. Because I simply cannot do a project without getting out the epoxy, I decided I would fill in this uh, knot hole here. I wanted this to be relatively subtle when it was done, so I mixed a couple of the different pigments together so I could try and match the wood. I do like that it came out a little bit shiny, so it kind of matches the natural grain of the wood too. Came back with the heat gun to make the epoxy a little bit thinner, that way it penetrated down a little bit easier and all the bubbles came out. I left all the strips of wood on the back a little bit proud of the edge, that way I could come back with the sander, get it all even. Then I went over all the edges with a router bit. Over the top here, I went over it with a round over to give it a little bit more of a 3D look when it went into the wall. Then of course coming back and sanding everything smooth before finishing it. I decided to use a French cleat as a way to attach it to the wall, so this is the top piece. If you aren't familiar with it, it's two pieces of wood cut at a matching angle, and then you can just slide the top one over the bottom one and it'll lock it into place pretty well. To figure out exactly how thick the mirror was, I took one of the other pe broken pieces of it, set it up in the calipers, and that will allow me to have a measurement for the next portion of this. And just so everything matched on the back side of this, I used another scrap piece of that maple, cutting it down to size, and then I set up this measurement off of how thick that piece of mirror was. I did it so it was just a little bit thinner, that way I could get some clamping pressure on it. I go through and I cut it with a table saw blade, and this is going to give me a little lip that I can set the mirror inside. After I get that cut out, then all I have to do is remove this little piece of wood on the edge. Then I'm going to go back and I cut this into three different pieces so I can do two on the top and one on the bottom just because it's broken in kind of a triangular shape on the top. I got a little mini HVLP spray gun from Harbor Freight, and it's been working really well for a lot of uh, wood projects where I don't need to have the full gun like I do for automotive paint. This is an automotive paint. It's a 2K clear, so a two-part catalyzed clear coat. I wanted to give it a really shiny finish. I wanted it to uh, really bring out the grain, the chatoyance of the wood, so that's why I'm using this. And it's a really hard, durable finish. I mean, yeah, think car finish. I 
off camera I finished off these pieces and I gave them a little bit of a bevel on the edge so those are the parts that had that channel cut into them then I'm just screwing them down into the back to hold the actual mirror in. I did forget to take into account the thickness of these so when I tried putting it on the wall the first time it stuck out a little bit so I had to take these off again and then I uh, thinned them down I just used a belt sander to get some material off of them and then it sat flat against the wall after that. To hang it on the wall I was finding out where the studs were so I could see if I needed any drywall anchors. Turns out the stud was kind of off center so I got I could get one of the screws into the stud and then I have to mark the other ones to put drywall anchors in. To make sure the holes lined up perfectly I made the holes in the piece of wood first and then just drew them directly through onto the wall. The two on the left here you can see I'm enlarging for the drywall anchor. Using these kind to just screw in, I figured since one part's going to be in the stud, they don't have to be super strong, but I wanted a little bit of strength on both the sides. A little bit hard to see, but I did have to countersink the drywall anchor one so the screws were long enough to get all the way through it. So this is the great part about that French cleat system. It's super easy to hang. You just slide it on there and those angles meet up and it really secure on the wall. So I really liked how the extra thickness of those pieces made the mirror look in the end. I wasn't planning it, but that extra thickness really makes it look more substantial and there's no twist left on it. It fits dead flat up against the wall. So I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. I'd love a like, love a comment. Uh, if you'd like to see more of this stuff, go ahead and click that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.